Okay, I'm going to talk about the latest in TV that I've used. Uh, went through a fiasco with an X85J, which, by the way, is a very good TV if you're not going to use external devices. Uh, you're watching a TV signal right now on this one, a streaming signal, uh, which is fed through the 2.1 HDMI ports, which is why you need them, off a of Roku Ultra onto a A80J 77 inch OLED. What I can tell you about this TV is if you're going to buy one of these, uh, buy it from a reputable source. Buy it from somebody who has reviews and lets you actually find out what's good about the TV. Which, by the way, unfortunately, eliminates Amazon. So you're going to want to buy it from Best Buy and get an extended warranty. And if you're older, you're going to want to have it installed. And even if you're younger, give that a really a lot of thought. It's worth the money. And the reason I say that is if you don't have it mounted on a wall, you're way more likely to break the TV or your pets. I don't even have to tell you this. I, I can't tell you how many times I went to people's house with their computers and saw a broken monitor because of kids or pets. And so you're going to want to do that. Extended warranty. Two years should be enough. Uh, generally, if you mount it on the wall, chances of it getting an accidental breakage are almost zero. But it's still there. Now, let's, let's go over the basics here. These are uh, missive TVs. They're not an LED. Uh, they're an OLED. Obviously, you guys have heard of these if you're looking on the channel. But what you need to know is missive TVs are each individual light dot on the TV are lit up by itself. They don't have a backlight. That's why your pictures are clearer and your blacks are blacker. Uh, no, do you want to have this in a room that's really super well lit? It'll work, but it won't be as good as if you have it in a room that has less light. And I do mean you can have it in a room that has light in it, okay? As long as it's not direct on the TV. Uh, you're going to get some reflections, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, it has a 2.1 and it uses eARC, which is the energy efficient. This particular system is hooked to a Nakamichi Shockwave Pro 7.14, I believe it is. And it has uh, that Roku box attached to it, and that's it. You get really good sound in this room. Uh, it is Dolby Atmos, and it is a sound bar I do recommend if you're going to have any good TV that you like. Uh, if you're going to use only internal software, then I'd still recommend the X85J, also from Sony. Uh, due to problems I had with uh, LG TVs, I returned one a while back. Uh, it was a, a C1, I think it was. or It didn't turn out to be a very good TV. So I'll tell you right there, you need to very seriously think about uh, buying a Sony if you have the two of them available. Uh, if you don't have the two of them available, then you're going to want to you want to try and shop somewhere else. But uh, anyway, buy it from Best Buy, have them delivered, set it up, and get an extended warranty, and that covers that. Picture-wise, these are tens. Obviously, you've seen all the reviews. That's not what we're reviewing. We're reviewing the ports on this TV, and the ports connecting to external devices, and the processor. Uh, which is on this TV, which on the Sony is extremely good at stepping up a signal. If you have a DVD quality video, it will come out pretty darn good on this TV, as will any HD content also. And if you're looking at this right now in 4K, which which it would be nice if you would, but no way you're going to be able to do that, uh, you're going to find that this is an extremely beautiful TV. Great color saturation everything. But when you go through an HDMI port, that 2.1 has to match all the way from the cables, from your devices, okay, which is that black box in the corner there, to your soundbar, which is doing your pass-through on this TV. They have to be 2.1, and uh, you have to have a powerful enough processor. And I found that there was a problem either with the motherboard, the CPU, or not being powerful enough, or defective CPU or memory on the X85. So I had to swap it out and get a different TV, and trust me, it's an expensive and very pain in the rear end to put on your credit card to go up to uh, 
a 77 inch OLED, but that's gone and done. So TV review, this is an outstanding TV matched with that particular sound bar. Uh, what you're going to do down the road, I can't tell you. But I can tell you, if you're going to buy a TV, this is this is a uh, picture quality as far as you're going to go right now. They are now QD L OLEDs by Samsung. They're going to make it a little bit brighter, probably that not that much brighter. And pl is it going to be worth the extra money that you're going to get charged? Uh, probably not. Now here's your warnings. Warning number one: Do not watch ESPN or the CW live on broadcast streaming because they put logos on them that will burn your OLED. Okay? And a lot of people don't talk about that, but if you watch sports and that's your primary function for buying a TV, don't buy an OLED. If you play video games, don't buy an OLED. I don't care what they say. I will never listen to their little hype about how great their access times and, and all that is. I worked with computers for years. Uh, I've always worked with computers. I build my own for, until this last one, the first one I've ever got from another company, CyberPower. Most of them are built by me from scratch. And I'll tell you, if you buy an OLED TV and you want to play video games like World of Warcraft, it doesn't matter, like World of Warcraft, any video games that have a static display, meaning a bar, a menu bar, you will burn this TV and you will hate it. So don't. What is an OLED for? It's for watching movies TV shows, anything with a constant memory. I mean, if you want to watch fish swim on your screen, an OLED is a great idea. Okay? Now, there is a fish screen saver you can get for these TVs. I recommend to anybody because it changes the background, plus moves everything else side to side so it doesn't cause any problems. If you do leave the room when you're watching a TV show, turn these TVs off. You can do that by just one little switch. You can go to the TV itself under their uh, menu, and it has a picture off, which lets you turn off the actual photo. There's no picture image. If you leave the room, if it goes to a static screen, it doesn't burn your TV. So that's what you need to worry about. Those are the big deals with OLEDs. Um, and if you're running 2.1, make sure everything matches. If you don't, 99% chance if it doesn't work right right out of the box, your cables are bad. So make sure you get some very good cables. Uh, this is currently running on a Eros a Wi-Fi mesh system. Uh, it's about 520 megabit per second, something like that. In this room, I've measured it at that speed. So you can run 4K HDR with all the gadgets on it. <laughs> Having Alexa in your house is always fun, isn't it? Anyway, um... If you look at that, that's the thing you want to go with. If you go with an OLED, uh, just make sure you don't display static screens. And uh, you'll be pleased as punch. Uh, review on the TV, real simple. Anybody who hasn't gotten an OLED TV, if you can't afford one, even a smaller version of it. Uh, your room is very key to the, the immersion effect for watching movies at night or daytime. You should have, when it's around 16 feet, a 75 or larger TV. It's just that simple. If you don't do it, you'll regret it. Uh, it's a TV until it's immersive. And immersive, it goes on how big the screen is, and uh, that's your big deal. Uh, how realistic is it? It's so realistic that the kitties freak out and leave the room when sound is on and the TV is on a picture because it's so clear there's no difference between it and looking out your window. Well, actually, and to tell you the truth, on some days it's actually better on the TV than it is looking out the window. So, this is a TV I recommend. Uh, any of the uh, X80Js, sorry, A80Js from Sony, even the smaller one on up, they're all perfect. You can get bigger, but past the size of 77, it is unaffordable by anyone with a credit card, which is pretty much how you have to buy stuff nowadays uh, if you're going to get a nice TV. Uh, they will wear out over time. Uh, they will get dimmer over a long period of time. But probably you're looking at about 10 years before it's really bad. And then you're looking at a new TV. The technology will jump again. 
Uh, don't recommend Samsung. Uh, and that's because of past experience with them and the Tencent operating system. I do recommend you get an OLED and then you very carefully go out and get yourself a uh, uh, external device like the Roku Ultra. And then you'll never be dissatisfied. Easy controls, which gives you the best operating system. And then on top of that, extremely beautiful pictures because of the Sony TV, which has the best picture. And then make sure you buy a warranty. And I'll give you another review down the road.